God is good all the time. And God is good. He's even good on a Sunday evening. On a Sunday evening. He has blessed us. He has allowed us to come uh, to this place to worship him in spirit as well as in truth. And we just thank God. I, I, I love the scripture where Paul said it is in him that we live, we move, and we have our very being. Uh, we understand we cannot take our next breath without um, God say so. So we just thank him for allowing us to inhale and exhale and, and to be in the land of the living, and to land, in the land of the living amongst loving Christian folks. Amen. 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 If we ain't there, I'm prophesying right now. <laughs> loving Christian folks. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. We're going to get there. We're going to get there. Uh, and, and I declare and I decree um, this is still the place that God wants us to be. Amen. In the household of faith. Yes. Because Jesus died for us. Mm -hmm. Jesus died for us. And y'all know whatever Jesus redeemed. Amen. If it was junk, it ain't junk no more. Amen. 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 Y'all ain't saying nothing in this church Amen. right Amen. now. I'm preaching already. Amen. Sister Button, I ain't even got started good. Amen. But y'all know, y'all know anything that Jesus put his hands on, it's going to be the better. It's going to be the better. Amen. 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 So even on tonight, as we stand in tiptoe of anticipation of the baptism that's going to shortly take place, uh, let's look at the book of Hebrews one more time. Let's go over to chapter number 10. Chapter number 10 and chapter number 9 is all about the high priest that we now have in Christ Jesus. It talks about under this covenant, under this dispensation, how we are a privileged people, how God is doing a new thing under this dispensation. But one of the things that I want to point out is found in chapter number 10. And we'll begin reading. Uh, we read verse number 22 this morning, but I want to pick up there because I want to tie this into what we started on this morning. Let's pick up that verse number 22, but we're going to read to a very familiar verse. Um, we have started at 22 and conclude at verse number 25. Look what the Bible says. The Bible says, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. Mm -hmm. For he is faithful that promise. Mm -hmm. Verse number 24, and let us consider one another mm -hmm. to provoke one another unto love and to good works. Yeah. Not forsaken the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another. Mm -hmm. And so much the more as you see the day approaching. Mm -hmm. I, I want to take my topic straight from verse number 24. Let us provoke one another unto love. Mm -hmm. Provoke one another unto love. As we know, as we've been going through the book of Hebrews, we understand that the letter was written to a group of Christians who came out of Judaism but they were considering going back under that system. They are, they are now Christians, but they are drifting. Mm -hmm. Being that they were drifting, this led to doubting. Being that they were doubting, this led to disobedience. And, and what the Hebrew writer is warning them about and warning, warning us about is the fact that when you go from drifting, 
When you go from drifting to doubting, from doubting to disobedience, the only thing that's left is death. Even when we looked at it this morning, when we don't discern the <coughs> body of Christ right, the Bible says this brings death to us. And even when we study 1 Corinthians, the 11th, chap the 11th chapter, the death wasn't a sudden death. That's why he said, it's some among you that are sick. They're not dead yet, but they are sick. The next uh, stage is death. It's some sick among you because they are not discerning the body of God, the body of Christ properly and with reverence, right? Mm -hmm. But he, he talks to us. He says, now this profession that you made, he said, I want you to draw nearer to God with a true heart. Now, the true heart is important because, see, we don't like to admit it or not. But before Christ, we got messed up by worldly things. I know we like to think we got it going on. I know we like to think that we okay and I'm wiser and I'm better than him. But the truth of the matter, if Christ hasn't put his mind in you, whatever mind you have in you need to be uprooted and transformed by the renewing of your mind. And we're going to read that. Uh -uh. But, but, but he says, he says, with a true heart, this is how we draw near to God. And I got to remind us once again, Jesus said, out of the heart of man flows the issues of life. Where comes fornication? He says, out of the heart. Where come murder? Out of the heart. Amen. What comes lying? Out of the heart. Well, well, I ain't done all that stuff. He said, you ain't even got to do it. If you meditating and thinking on it, you got a messed up heart. Amen. Oh, God, I think that's worth staying there for a minute. <laughs> um, he, says, he says, your heart needs to be fixed. Mm -hmm. And the truth of the matter, the world will give us a cold and callous heart as well. It ain't easy to love because I've been hurt before. Yes. But this is the thing. We are in a new situation. We are in a new sphere. We are in a new realm of life. Amen. God has translated us into the kingdom. Mm -hmm. We're not just dealing with worldly folks no more. Mm -mm. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. See, now we're dealing with people who uh, are filled with the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. People whose flesh is not leading. Uh, amen. Uh, amen. Am I in the right place? Is this the house of God? <laughs> amen. Amen. Uh, people whose flesh is not leading them no more. The Holy mm -hmm. Spirit is leading me now. Amen. Now now I can be vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Now uh, um, the flesh is not leading me because now I, I, I don't have to respond with a cold heart anymore, right? Okay, okay, okay. So he tells us, he says, draw closer to God with a true heart, fullness of faith, heart sprinkled, sprinkled from an evil conscience, and our bodies washed and pure with water. And then he says, let us hold fast our profession. But what I really want to deal with is verse number 24. He said, let us consider one another and to provoke one another to love. Oh, I want to stay there for a minute. Because we know how to provoke each other. But for some reason, we don't know how to provoke each other to love. We know how to get on each other's nerve, and we know how to push buttons, and we know how to make people mad. But he says, no, that ain't what we're looking for no more. You've been transformed. Provoke somebody to love. That's it. Encourage somebody to be the better. You, you don't have to be cold. You don't have to be callous. I know we're hard fighting soldiers, but we love it. We're loving our Amen. Amen. Some of us, we, we come to church to fight. Amen. Amen. But our war ain't with flesh and blood. He already told us that. He said our war is with principalities. Things in the spiritual realm that we cannot even put our hands on. 
You can't fight a spirit with a gun and a knife. You can't fight a spirit with a punch. You gonna you gonna punch a spirit? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and if you gonna beat a spirit, you gotta beat a spirit with spiritual things. Come on, man. That's it. Ephesians the sixth chapter, when he talked about that 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 full armor of God, mm -hmm. he said, "Put on Breast what y'all the breastplate of righteousness." Of righteousness. Yes. He said, "Let your helmet be of salvation." Yes. The sword of your spirit is the sword of the spirit, the word of God. Mm -hmm. He talked about the shield of faith. Yeah. And then he talked about something on your loins. Y'all remember that? Mm -hmm. uh, uh But, but, yeah, yeah. But everything is spiritual because we're dealing with spiritual things now. Amen. He says, provoke one another to love. Mm. Now, here's the thing. When we come together as the body of Christ, that's what our primary focus is supposed to be. Building each other up. Yeah. When we assemble together, we are building each other up, encouraging each other. Amen. Not tearing. It, it's, it's a shame, Brother Keith. Mm. When you feel more edified when you go around your world, the friends. <laughs> That's a crying shame. Oh, I feel better when I go around my world, friends. Oh, with my bros and, and all. That's a crying shame. I feel better when I'm with my co-workers. No, no. The body of Christ, we supposed to be a community of builders. We, we, we all are a temple, right? We all are a temple, but when we come together, Brother Buddy, our job is not for me to see how I can, uh, you know, take a brick away. My job is to see how I can put a brick on your temple. Amen. Yes. Amen. Not, not, oh, look at Keith. He think he's somebody. Really? I, I should be building up. Keith, you is somebody. Why well, I'm going to tear you down. You are somebody. Amen. Amen. We tear each other down. He, he, think, he think he all that. He is all that. Amen. She is all that. Oh, she thinks she pretty today. She, she's supposed to feel pretty. Amen. Look at him with that suit on. Y'all ain't saying nothing in this church. No, build him up. And I ain't telling y'all a lie, is it? Right, right. Don't be lying now. Amen. <laughs> don't be lying. And if you, that ain't your flavor and all that, don't be geeking people up. Amen. You know, if that ain't your thing, don't. But but at the end of the day, y'all know. Y'all know we do it all the time. Yeah. Brother Buddy. Okay, I, I, I'm a preacher, right? Yeah. Matter of fact, I, I attended your sister's memorial yesterday. Was that yesterday? Yeah. Saturday. That was yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. But we do it all the time. The preacher said it. He said, he said, now it's easy to eulogize a Christian. He said, because, you know, I don't have to get up here lying. He said, you know, she don't gave me a whole lot to work with. But the truth of the matter, when we go to a funeral, I don't care if that was your arch enemy. You can look back on something because at a funeral, that ain't the time to start talking about I really didn't like him. You shouldn't have came if you're going to come in here and disrespect my daddy like that. You're going to come up here and tell me I ain't really like him anyway. I'm glad he, oh, really? And all the family in here, you think you about to get out of here? You about to join them? Y'all ain't saying nothing. But when we go to a funeral, we come with our best regards. Yeah. Now, I stop by to tell you, Sister McCutcheon, even on this, on this evening, if we can do that for somebody mm -hmm. who is no longer in this clay body, you mean to tell Teach me you it. can't find something Teach it. to say good about your brother or sister or something that you admire about them? Amen. Come on. Amen. Amen. Okay, 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 okay. Even if you can't, it's still commanded. That's right. Yes, it is. That's right. Mm -hmm. Amen. But, but one of the ways that we do that is in the assembly. That's why we live in a time now, uh, people say, I don't go to church no more. Mm -hmm. No, no, you ain't no Christian if you don't go to church no more. Amen. 
Because if you're a child of God, the Bible says you're supposed to be assembling with like-minded folks because we are the body of Christ. Y'all know under the Old Testament, there were uh, 12 tribes of Israel. Mm -hmm. If one tribe was missing, that means that the 12 tribes of Israel was incomplete because y'all know 12 is significant. It's the number of government. Even, y'all know we got 12 months, that's significant. Yeah. Without the 12, it's not whole. It's not complete in Christ Jesus. We got 12 calendar years, months, right? Amen. 12 is the number of government, 12 tribes of Israel. But, but if one tribe wasn't represented, when, especially on um, the, whole and high, the, the, the high and holy days, if one tribe wasn't represented, that means that the assembly wasn't complete. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what we're dealing with in this text. He says, don't you stop assembling as the matter of song is. Mm -hmm. He says, it's, it's power in the assembly. Yes. It's some things that, tr that take place in the assembly that can't take place online. Mm -hmm. and, and for those who are viewing, keep on viewing. But, but at the end of the day, God wants you in his house. Amen. He wants you to assemble with like-minded believers because it's some encouragement, it's some things that transpire that you can't get online or in your bed. Amen. Oh, I know I'm telling the truth. Amen. I know I'm telling the truth. And it's amazing to me, we live in a society now where we got more people, we got more ways to communicate, and we don't even like communicating as much as we did before. Mm. Am I talking to somebody? <laughs> you go to dinner with somebody, instead of y'all talking, all y'all on y'all phone texting and <laughs> on Facebook and on Instagram. That, that's the time we li living in. Yeah. And you can see it in the assembly, Brother Bud. Got 3,000 friends on Facebook. Come to the assembly and you say, turn to your neighbor. You be like, I don't want to turn. <laughs> you got 3,000 people. You talking about that's your friend. And then when you say turn to your neighbor and say hello and good morning and give them a hug and you look at I don't want to hug them. Amber. Really? <laughs> and then you got 3,000 people in your phone book Amber. and then you don't even want to speak to the person in front of you. For me, in my house, I enjoy technology, but I like face-to-face -face stuff. Because it's some stuff you can't get over the phone. Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And, and I like, Sister Green, I like talking to people in their face because, you know, you know, amen. Because, you know, we could be on the phone. I'm doing something else. I ain't really paying attention to it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I ain't thinking about nothing you saying. I'm just looking for my way to say yeah. But if we're in front, you know I'm paying attention. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And I'm looking at you to see if you paying attention to it, see if you sincere. <laughs> On the phone, we could be doing whatever, and then, you know, we laughing, we, we act like we're serious, but we take our, our phone away from our mouth and laugh. Y'all know how we do all this stuff. Amen. But it's some things we can't get out of. I know we live in a, technolo a technological age. It's some things we can't get from technology that God has put in the local assembly. Number one, <laughs> Jesus said, where two or three are gathered in my name, mm -hmm. there I am in the midst of them. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, when we assemble for his purposes, that's when he show up. Amen. That's number one. But number one through 16 is about to be found where we're about to go to. Amen. Let's go over to Romans chapter number 12, and the lesson is going to be yours on this evening. Romans chapter number 12. Remember what I said? 12 is the number of government. This is not arbitrarily that this is in chapter number 12 of Romans. But, but let's go over to Romans chapter number 12. And if I had time, I would read 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter. Both of them deal with uh, um, the completion of the body of Christ. But, but I want to leave you with this. I want to leave you with this. We're just going to read it. And we may say something about two or three things. 
But let's start at verse number one. The Bible starts off by saying, I beseech you, therefore, brother, mm -hmm. by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Mm -hmm. Verse number two, he says, and be not conformed to this world. You came out of the world. Don't be conformed to the world. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Verse number three says, for I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. Verse number four, he says, for as we have many members in one body, all members have not the same office. So we being many are one body in Christ and every one member one to another having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us. Brother, prophecies, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith or ministries, let us wait on our ministry or he that teaches on teaching or he that exhorts on uh, or, uh, exhortation, he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. He that rules with diligence he that shows mercy with cheerfulness, let love be without dissimulation. A whore that which is evil, cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affectionate. Come on, I, I want to pause here for a minute. Be kindly affectionate to who? One to another. To one another. It's one thing talking about I love God. You don't love God? No. <laughs> and the way that we show that we love God is how we treat each other. Mm. If you transform, if you not conform to the world, he says one of the ways that we show that we love and that we are transformed is how we deal with one another. He says be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love. In honor, prefer one another, not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patience in tribulation, continuing an instance in prayer, distributing to the necessities of the saints, giving to hospitality. Mm -hmm. He said to the saints, I want y'all to hear this. Mm -hmm. He said to the saints. Yeah. I, and it's amazing to me. It's amazing to me. And you better be careful with that. And, and we see it in our family. It, it's amazing to me. We know how to treat everybody right except for the people in our household. Yeah. Yeah. Go to work. Don't disrespect nobody. Don't call nobody out of their name. <laughs> Amen. You, you kind with people. You patient with people. So on and so forth. But when we get in our household... Kids scared to look. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Y'all ain't gonna help me up in here. Because I'm stepping on some toes. It's amazing to me. We we and I use that example, Brother Keith. It's amazing to me. We go around people that's just social friends and so on and so forth. We know how to treat them. We know how to respect what's going on as well. We don't cause no disruptions. We don't do anything to, uh, uh, you know, to upset the order that's taking place. Mm -hmm. But he says, the litmus test is how you deal with the saints. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. As your preacher, I'm your preacher, but I understand I am not your savior. Amen. And I'm not your king. Y'all are God's people. Amen. And I'm God's people as well. Amen. Is, that a, is that right? Amen. That ain't right sense. I'm God's person as well. I'm single. <laughs> but at the end of the day, 
one scripture says, be careful how you handle another man's servant. But he says, he says, the level of our love is going to be based on how we deal with the saints. As we talked about on this morning, Jesus bought the church with his blood. So, so, so I'm going to tear down what Jesus is building up. I'm going to tear down what Jesus thought was worth giving his life for. And I'm going to say, you ain't nothing. Jesus thought enough to die for us. So that means that I'm something. Amen. I know we don't like it because we, 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 we like that false humility. Well, I'm just a humble servant. Amen. False humility. Amen. It's one thing to be humble, but it's another thing trying to make yourself humble. Amen. Amen. You know you ain't humble. Amen. Y'all ain't saying nothing. And it's amazing to me. Everybody know how to turn up everywhere else where they go, but when they get to the church, they want to act like they humble. Oh, y'all know what turned up. I'm talking to my young people right here. <laughs> Go everywhere else. The life of the party. You, you see them in different life. You say, wow. <laughs> Sister McPhail ain't no. I ain't no. In church. <laughs> y'all ain't say, oh, Sister McPhail, I'm just messing with you. Ain't that? In church. Mm. Amen. But the Bible says we got to use those gifts that we use in other arenas to provoke the saints Amen. Amen. to love, to build us up in the work. All right, let's finish reading. Let's finish reading. Let's finish reading. Uh, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulations, continuing in instance in prayer, distributing to the necessity of the saints, giving in hospitality. Bless them with persecute you. Bless and curse not. Rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things but condescend to men of low degree. Be not wise in your own conceit. And then verse number 17 he says recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. Yes. And then he said, if it's possible, as much as lies in you, live peaceably with all men. So look, he go from talking about the saints, how we should be dealing with the saints. Yes. But he says, now, when we provoke each other to love, he said, that's going to steal out from when we do the closing prayer. Mm -hmm. Now, we've been dealing with our household, right? So when we get out in the community, that same love is going to extend to all mankind. Amen. Oh, God. Oh, God. Uh, uh. And then uh, verse number 19, he says, Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, mm. but rather give play. Oh, God. Oh, this is good. I could have ran straight to this verse and I wouldn't have said nothing else. But look what the Bible <laughs> says. The Bible says, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto the wrath yes. of God, for it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Amen. Look what the Bible says, Sister Russell. Mm -hmm. Don't be cooking no grits, talking about as soon as you come in, I'm throwing these grits <laughs> on the <this> chest. <laughs> The Bible says, no, don't, don't, don't be looking how you going to get people back. He said, give, give place for God to deal with people's situations. Amen. Yeah. Okay, if you don't carry our vengeance on, now you ain't gave no room for God. Mm. Amen. Brother Green, you don't got me back. <laughs> and, and, and what God want to do, now he said, Green already don't carry our justice on. So now I can't, and I, well, let me not say he can't because God can do whatever he wants to. But God says, give me room because I see everything. Mm -hmm. I got all the evidence laid out. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Exhibit A. Mm -hmm. Exhibit B. Mm -hmm. Exhibit C. But sometimes we only see Exhibit A, but God knows all the facts. He knows all uh, of the evidence that's in, 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 involved. And he says, give room for me. To bring out 
justice in such a way. Yes. Our job is not to return evil for evil. I know, I know it ain't popular, but it's the truth anyhow. All us coming out the world, Sister Grove, amen. And don't be looking like that, Sister Grove. I'm about to mess with you for a minute. <laughs> but we coming out the world, all of us got a past. Now, if I hold on to my past, Sister Keith, you hold on to your past. Alicia hold on to her past. Sister Button hold on to her past. All we can do is fight. <laughs> yes. But if all of us are being transformed and we, we continue to provoke each other uh, for the transformation process, now, you know, we don't have to return evil for evil because we know all of us are trying to overcome that old man. Even on this morning, even on this morning, uh, you know, it's some things as humans we slip up and say, but we got to be big enough to apologize. Amen. I just did it this morning. I called Lori out and told her she barely come to church and she done brought a gas. So I, I called her before she left on the parking lot. I said, I'm sorry, I did not mean to say that. Amen. I didn't, though. It's not one in my heart, Sister Gady. I know that woman in transition. And she was saying, you know, I'm doing my best and so on and so forth. And then it ain't my job to tear her down. I, you know, I, the struggle is real. You know? Uh, so I had to apologize. She said, I accept your apology. I know you love me, brother. You know? Amen. But I had to be big enough to do that. Yes. I could have said, no, nah, I'm the preacher. When I say God ordained, amen, y'all ain't saying nothing in this church. And as the people of God, Brother Makachi, I know you got your poker face on. Amen, somebody. But sometimes, sometimes, we got to say, okay, uh, that may be the way you perceived it. Amen. That wasn't my intentions. Because sometimes people, 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 see, see, sometimes people are looking for things already. Mm. And, and sometimes we just have to disarm people. Mm. No, 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 that, that's not my intentions. I, I'm not doing that. That's, that's not it. Matter of fact, I was going through something myself. I, that, I wasn't even thinking about that. Matter of fact, it was something plaguing me. It's some things that I'm dealing with. Something I'm dealing with with my children. I, it ain't you. I'm dealing with something myself. You didn't even know nothing about it. You didn't have privy to even know nothing about that. And we got to be, listen to what he said. Okay, I'm, I, I'm trying to call. He said, cop the sin. You know, even though you may be on a higher level, he said, even though you might be on a higher level and you may be a little more mature, he said, sometimes you got to condescend. Mm -hmm. Come down to people's level yes. and bring them up with you. Yes. Amen? Amen. I like that saying, never look down on a man yes. unless you're looking down Amen. to pull them up. Amen. He said, condescend to men of low degree. And the point of me going low, now that, okay, I'm leaving y'all alone. But that's, the, that's what humble is, Brother Gray. Humble is the fact that you get low enough with somebody. Mm -hmm. and, and you get low enough with them so you can help bring them up. Yes. That's humility. Amen. And that's what Jesus did on our behalf. He was humble enough to come down from heaven, <laughs> get on our level. And, and, you know, he could have ruled from heaven, but he came down. Get on our level. We down in the dirt. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Amen. In the miry dirt. Oh, I got to call the road right through here. Uh, sin. Prostitution. Did I get anybody yet? Uh, drinking. Smoking. I ain't called it yet, sister, but uh, fornicating. Lying. Cheating. In the dirt. Can't see him. Jesus said, I'm coming the way you went. Y'all ain't saying nothing in this church. This sermon ain't going right. Amen. I'm trying to build y'all up, right? <laughs> but the Bible says, provoke one another to love. Okay, I'm, I'm closing. 
It was one man who particularly was known as the man of encouragement, Barnabas. Barnabas was a man of encouragement. And as we just read in Romans the 12th chapter, the Bible says some have the gift of that. And that's another thing. I'm closing, Sister Grace. But when we don't assemble together, it's some gifts that God has given us that the church lose out on. All of us don't have the same gift. The Bible says some people specifically have the gift of encouragement, the gift of giving, the gift of leading, the gift of preaching, the gift of praying. The Bible says some people have the gift of exhortation. And when you're not around, even if it's just the gift of that pretty smile yeah. or the gift of that hug, nobody don't hug me like that. That's a real hug. And my wife used to get on me. She said, you keep, you not, I know you used to all these church hugs. Now you're giving me church hugs. Y'all ain't saying nothing. See, I ain't one of the church family. Give me a real hug. I gave her a little hug, church hug as well. But, 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 but some people are gifted in various ways. And when we come together, that helped build the church up. Mm -hmm. Now, now, can we all pray? Yes. But some people are specifically gifted in that area, and that's where God allows them to be a blessing to the body of Christ. And when we don't assemble, we lose out on that. I'd be remiss if I didn't give you that at this point. Um, from my study, it showed that when I know we use it that way, um, Hebrews 10, chapter verse 7, 25, it shows that this wasn't just dealing with the weekly assembly. From us studying, we can see that they were talking about forsaking Christianity altogether. Mm -hmm. And he was telling them one of the ways for you to be built up where you're not even willing to go back into that is stand in the assembly. Because if you're not in assembly, whatever you came out of, it's going to be attractive to you yeah. to go back. Amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to let it go. Who ain't called? Who ain't called? Jahim ain't called Jahim. Jahim, I'm trying to let it go. But y'all know, y'all know, uh, with 12 steps, they tell you, you need to be around people who recover just like you. Yeah. Don't start thinking, oh, I'm good. No, come to these assemblies. Yes. And that's, that's, a, that's a biblical principle that they borrowed from us. Y'all know that? Mm -hmm. yeah. They borrowed that from the church. Yeah. But we come together, I'm fighting sin just like you. Yeah. I'm fighting the devil just like you. Amen. I can identify with what you're going through because I'm fighting the same battle that you fight. Yeah. Let's fight this thing together. Yeah. Let's yeah. fight this thing together. I love you. Mm -hmm. I like that saying. We didn't say I love you. Ain't nothing you can do about it. But we know it's something you can do about it. That's why we got to have agape love. That's that unconditional love. That, that's not that storge. Storge, you know, storge is based on how it make me feel and so on and so forth. No, agape love is unconditional. It's not... Eros love these are Eros, y'all know Eros? That's where we get the word eroticism from. It's not based on a central love. It's unconditional love. That's why we love each other and we provoke one another to love as well. So, Brother Button, when we leave out of here, don't push them buttons no more. Amen. Amen. Build me up. Amen. Amen. Don't, don't press them buttons no more. Amen. 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 Sister Pam, when we leave out of here, provoke me to love. Make me another cake. Amen. Y'all ain't saying that. I'm gonna go. I better close. Amen. I, I ain't getting no sleep. I ain't getting no sleep, Jerry. Um, but we're we going to prepare uh, for the baptism. And